let me show you how you can use DAP to match for Active Directory group membership. We have two users, AD user 1 and AD user 2. AD user 1 is member of a group that gives him access via VPN to server 100 and server 101. That's the AD user 1. AD user 2 is member of the group VPN server 100 access, but not the 101 access. What we will do is to use DAP to, on the fly, when the user logs in, add filtering and add access to different servers or resources on the inside, depending on group memberships. Let's do that. First of all, in a previous video, I showed you VPN filter. In order to use this function I will configure here, we need to remove the VPN filter because we use that filter to block traffic to other than server 100. I change to no filter on default group policy. And first of all, make sure that it works before doing any changes. I log in via VPN, and I want to make sure that I can reach both 100 and 101 server with any of these. This to one, two, three. I have two pings running, one to 100 and one to 101 and hopefully both will start. Yeah, now I have access to both servers on the inside, and I now want to modify that by creating dynamic access policies. What I can do here is that I add a DAP policy, add server 100 access, it's the name of it, and I will check for LDAP attributes. I will check for LDAP attribute member of. Instead of writing a group name here, I can click this button and it will retrieve all AD groups from the domain server. If this is a large environment and a large server with thousands of groups, it can take a while to do that. And also when you have retrieved them, you can filter by entering something in the filter field here. Like I enter VPN and press filter. Before doing that, I will see all groups like domain admins and domain computers and so on. If I filter, I will only see groups which contains this letters VPN. I check for 100 access group membership. So if the user that is logging in has an attribute member of that equals to VPN server 100 access, which is the same as that the user is member of that group, then I want to do something called network ACL filter. This function will add an access list to the VPN filter for that session. The filter I want to add is an access list, which I've already created, VPN server 100. Let's have a look at that. That access list, VPN server 100, is actually the same as the access list I did for the static VPN filter. It allows IP to 10.0.0.100. This does not have to be IP. This can be on protocol level, for example, allow only TCP 3389 to only allow remote desktop protocol or something. In this case, I use IP, but you can do this granularly, and this access list can contain many lines. So I can say, allow IP to server 100 and TCP 3389 to server 110, and so on and so on. But one access list per group belonging. So I have selected this one, then I add it to this box, which means that I add this access list to the VPN filter for that session. Let's do one more. Add, add server 101 access. If the user has an LDAP attribute of member of, which contains VPN server 101 access, then I should add access list VPN server 101 to the session and server 101. VPN server 101 access list allows permits traffic to 10.1.1.1. Okay, and I add that to the right there. After doing that, I will hopefully get this to work. We have our two pings up and running, but we need to log out and log in again in order to apply the dApps because the dApps are only applied at the login moment. First of all, I log in as AD user 1 which is member of both groups. So this will not give very much result because there will be a ping on both windows just as before. But we can do some tweaks and we can change the other user. So both these should be started. They are. 
let's log out. If I log in again with AD user 2, which is not member of the server 101 group, so it should not have access to the 10.0.0.1.1. If this works, the left window will start to reply and the right window will not. Yeah, it works. One tool to troubleshoot this, if it does not work the way it is expected, is to add user messages depending on each line. I will show you. For each line, we can add user message here. We can say adding access to server 100 in this line as a user message. And on this line, we say adding access to server 11 on that line. Apply. The reason for doing that, which is annoying for users, so you should not use it in production, but in a setup, when you initially configure it, you could use this to make sure that you see which DAP entries are being applied to the session. AD user one is that the user will get a user message, just like the block user ASA firewall got. This user message will get one line for each DAP line that is applied if the DAP line has a user message added to it. So it gets these two lines, and actually I wrote one with a capital A and one with a small a. It doesn't matter. I will just show you that if I log in with AD user 2, I will only get one of those lines in the user message. And I will hopefully get one user message. Yeah, adding access to server 100 and not server 101. So this is how dynamic access policies works. And it's powerful because instead of creating many, many groups of one group per combination of access in the firewall, you can create one group per usage. And you can add multiple access list lines together on the fly. So it's very powerful. This finishes the chapter in this course about AnyConnect. I have just scratched the surface. There are much, much more you can do with AnyConnect. It's so powerful, but this is enough for you to get started. And this is probably enough to implement it in some environments. I recommend that you start doing something like that and then you add more functionalities afterwards instead of trying to create the most advanced configuration in the beginning. Build it step by step and do a lot of tests during your configuration. So you first create one connection, then you add some functionality, then you add more functionality and so on. Otherwise, it's really hard to troubleshoot.